All right, today we're going to be talking about counterbalancing your wedges. We're going to see, can it help my short game? Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So we've done a video already about counterbalancing your driver and seeing what kind of benefits that can provide. Today in this video, we're gonna be looking at doing the same thing at the other end of your bag though, talking about your wedges and seeing if counterbalancing, at least for me, can help improve my short game. Now to be completely honest, I have pretty much no expectations as to what's gonna happen here. I have no idea how this is gonna shake out, but what we're gonna basically do here is I've got a sand wedge here, 56 degrees, that we're gonna start out hitting, just some stock 75 yard little, you know, little short game shots that you find yourself with all the time. Then I've got two different counterbalance weights that we're gonna put in. I've got 25 grams and I've also got 50 grams. We're gonna try each of those weights in here, we're gonna track all the numbers and we're gonna see how it changes the dynamics of my swing and the ball flight, and then just kind of look and see, did it make me better? Did it tighten things up? Am I a better pitcher of the golf ball with some extra weight here in the grip end? Now to start off, just to give you the measurements on this wedge, right now as it sits, weighs just over 450 grams and the swing weight on it is right around D4, D5. So pretty much your quote unquote stock configuration of a wedge, both weight and swing weight. And that's gonna be our starting point. So we'll hit a few shots. Again, this is 56 degrees, 75 yards. So this is just kind of a little, a little half to two thirds swing. And we're gonna see what we get out of this for starters, just as it sits. Gosh, that wasn't very good. Better use that one. That was better. All right, here's all the numbers from that. Ball speed, launch angle, spin rate. And as you can see, the dispersion there was not too bad, just in the stock configuration. Let's put 25 extra grams in here, put the same grip back on, see what happens. All right, 25 extra grams now means that the static weight of this club is now 475, 477 grams. The swing weight is now obviously gonna be quite a bit lighter. We are about C8, C9 for what that's worth. Everything else is the same. We're gonna do the same test again, hit a few more balls and see what happens. I'm definitely gonna take a few practice swings with this club now, cause I don't exactly know what to expect from it, so we'll see. I feel like that was higher maybe. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Okay, now let's put 50 grams in, see what happens. All right, now we've got 50 extra grams here. Swing weight has dropped into the low C's, so very light swing weight, but very heavy overall club. 
This one's going to be interesting. I'm not exactly sure what this is going to look like. It felt like with the previous one, it was a little easier to get more distance out of it with a lighter swing. I ended up hitting those shots a little bit further overall than I probably meant to. So we'll see if that trend continues with 50 grams or if this is actually going to start to move the other direction. <laughs> that is weird feeling. All right, this is going to take a couple to get used to. That was definitely a little bit strange feeling. That's about where it should be. But once you start swinging it a few times, again, you kind of get used to it. And all of a sudden, it doesn't feel nearly as unusual as it did in that first swing or two. I honestly feel like I'm a little bit quicker taking the club away. At least it feels that way. I don't know if it looks that way or not, but it feels like it's slightly quicker. Let's see if I can slow it down just a touch. All right, experiment over. Wedges in three different balance profiles, let's call them. First off, just looking at a couple things with the club data that I found interesting. Notice first off, the club speed actually was fastest using the 25 gram weight and was slower with both the stock configuration and with the 50 gram weight. So interesting that the middle one actually I was a little bit faster with when I was trying to basically keep everything the same. Also interesting with that 25 gram weight, everything else I was pretty consistently just barely into out in my swing path. And strangely with the 25 gram weight, the majority of my shots were actually slightly out to in. Last thing from the club data, look at my angle of attack and you'll see that as we continue to add more weight to the wedge, it continued to shallow out my angle of attack. So we went from 6.6 .6 on average down to 5.4 on average. All right, here's the ball data real quick. Again, I scrubbed out the worst of each set. So one out of each five shots I've removed from this. First off, notice ball speed highest with the 25 gram weight. Again, our club head speed was faster there, so not a big surprise. Again, I was trying to make the same basic swing every time, so something in that setup made me swing it a little bit faster or harder. Launch angle basically went up as we kept adding more counterbalancing to it. You can see it's creeping up slightly each time. The spin across all three was pretty close. The 25 gram counterbalance did give us the highest spin, but again, higher ball speed, higher club head speed. Now, when we get into dispersion, both left and right and short and long, what we see here is actually in both of the counterbalance setups, I improved my dispersion left and right by a pretty good amount. Looking at that standard deviation you can see. And the very, very, very slight edge goes to the 25 gram, but it's so close, I think it's fair to call it a tie between the 25 and the 50. But in both cases, I was definitely more consistent left and right with some counterbalance weight in the shaft. Finally, looking at the carry numbers, and you can see again, if we look at the standard deviation, both of our counterbalance options were better than the stock configuration. And the winner in this one by a more significant amount was the 50 gram counterbalance. Really, I guess we would say overall, both left to right and short to long, the 50 gram weight gave me the tightest overall dispersion. Last thing I'll say in this video, remember what the swing weight came out to with this club, C2, C3. There are a lot of people out there who put way too much value on what that swing weight number is. And if you told them you had a wedge at C2 or C3, they would lose their minds and not believe that that club could be in any way consistent, in any way accurate. But 
hopefully you've seen from this that it can be. So don't put too much value on swing weight. Put value on results. Put value on making sure that the club feels right and plays right for you. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you go down below, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll be alerted next time I post a video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.